Welcome back to a very special episode from Police to Priest. Episode number 27, and the Sunday of the Ascension of the Lord. I'm Father Ricks, joining Father Joe in a reflective episode of ending the Easter season in a time like this. In this episode, Father Joe and myself hold close the hard things that we've had to deal with in our ministry and in this Easter season and the sorrow and loss felt by those that we minister to. But there's another reason for tears, not the tears of sorrow that have become so familiar with the past few months, but tears of joy that only come through this trial by fire, ways that we can reach people that would have never otherwise been possible. If you haven't had a chance to check out our St. Joseph Mission prayers during the pandemic, we've got five more days of daily services in, I'll include the link below, before entering into this new environment. So Father Joe and myself pray that you can join us. And as always, we pray that you have the reassurance in the return to world that looks completely different now that you go in peace to love and serve the world in whatever form it takes and be kind to one another. Oh, thank you, Father. It's great to be here again. Dear people, reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of of the age. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. So 50 days after Easter, this is such a powerful day. Jesus, Jesus rises not only in spirit, but in body to heaven. He goes home to God to really think about this in, in modern perspective. This is actually Jesus, like most of us, is working from home now. He has left the earth, but in a way, he has really isolated us in a very different perspective. One that is profound, that I keep thinking about more and more. Father, if I may, as you know, uh, both you and Sister Nicole did a phenomenal job covering me most of the week with prayers during pandemic. I only did one service on Thursday. That's because I had, um, I did last rites, I did celebration of life, and then I did a burial for a young 55-year-old woman who I came to know just um, a short time ago. I had married her son and cancer took her, not COVID-19. So I was able to be present with the family and we gathered together as a community. And I keep thinking about all of those who have died during this pandemic and who have died alone and how tragic that is. Even though I did a modified liturgy of the Christian rite of burial, there was still some family there. And so that was a blessing to them and to Lori But that's the promise that Jesus makes today, that it's not over here. You rise and go to heaven. You have eternal life. And I I like to think of the progression of the Easter season, where we have the lead up to the Easter season, and there's a lot of anticipation for the resurrection of Christ and the the pain and suffering that I think uh, that we were all experiencing around that time of quarantine where people are going through that that spiritual crucifixion where a lot of life was interrupted uh, a lot of lives were lost and 
now, as we see, and we had talked a little bit about this leading up to the episode, that now we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel in the same way that the Easter season comes to a close. And there's a parallel for me that is just so powerful where we have gone through probably one of the hardest times in any of our lives that we would have ever experienced before. And here we are where there's hope. And at the same time, there's that uncertainty of what the future is going to hold for all of us because Christ ascends to the father. He's no longer with us. He's working from home in your very poetic words. And to see that we are in that exact same place at that exact same time I think that we can appreciate the beauty of scripture in a very new and different way that can offer us words of hope and a spiritual sense of calming that I don't think that I've ever experienced in my life. And I don't know kind of what your uh, thoughts are with just the dynamic of everything that's going on. Oh, totally true, Father. You said it perfectly. But you also express the same doubt that Jesus points out to the disciples. These are his apostles. They were with him. They watched all the miracles. Mm -hmm. They also watched him be arrested and tortured and crucified and die. And then they watch him come back and they get to spend um, 40 days with him watching another series of miracles. It's amazing. And he's telling them, now I'm going home and they're still doubting. And, you know, even though I agree with you, We have been through a terrible time, Um, but now it seems to be on a plateau and there's hope, but there's still people that are doubting. Are we going to get a second wave? Are more people going to die? Could this get worse? And to tell you the truth, I'm a little skeptical myself. I'm, I'm nervous. You know, this week, this Easter season, this time has seen a profound amount of death. You know, I think back of my days as an early cop, as well as the training that you receive. And you're supposed to detach. You're supposed to take yourself out of the emotional pain of all of that discourse. And I have been, you know, on so many calls as a, as a cop, and it's called an unattended death that you go to a house that someone had passed away and and you do the routine. You examine the scene, you try to make a determination. Was it natural causes? Was it a homicide? Is it a suicide? Then you call the medical examiner. You go through a whole ritual. You're doing work after work after work. And even though now as priests, when we go to, when we go to some place where there is a death, there's a whole new set of details that need to be done. You know, Jesus in this gospel gives one commandment. He tells them, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's all I want you to do is go and spread my word and make more Christian, make more people of faith and hope. As Catholics, we baptize children, infants, and we do that to save their souls. Most Christian denominations baptize when you're a little older. You get to make the decision yourself. As Catholics, we baptize a second time. We baptize before we put you into the ground. And I re-baptized this beautiful woman this week. And the emotion of being gathered and having her husband of 36 years watching me use holy water and bless his beautiful wife. And she looked beautiful in that coffin. My heart was breaking. But it's such a powerful symbol. And today, uh, on this Sunday of the Ascension, it hit me. And as I was throwing that holy water upon Lori, what a powerful ritual that is and how it makes such a difference. The ritual is supposed to be done in a church. That's where it's supposed to happen. Just like when we baptize in a church. The irony is Jesus never worked in a church. He didn't have a cathedral. Literally, the liquor store across the street is open for business right now. But the beautiful Catholic church that is across the street, St. John the Baptist, with amazing, huge stained glass windows. It seats 500. That's closed. It is such an irony of what this time is doing. But we should transpose that. What it's doing is, it's giving us new opportunities, new ways to live, new ways to think, 
The church has never been about a building. The church, Father Rex, is what you and I are doing right now. It's a podcast. We're going into people's hearts and homes and cars. This is church. Without Tiffany stained glass windows, we are doing what Jesus told us to do. Go spread my word. Go help and make people feel better. Do something holy. And I think that that is one of those things that has been one of the the biggest blessings in this whole experience. And um, I was telling you beforehand, I, I wasn't sure how this would fit in, but I feel as though this is kind of a moment to share that obviously with the online Facebook church services, prayers during the pandemic is coming to a close this following week. We've got five more services after. And I was thinking about what I was going to say for my final reflection on uh, this coming Tuesday. And as I was just going through it in my head and kind of speaking out loud certain things that were on my heart, I just burst out in tears. And I, I, I couldn't, you know, I, we, we've had these moments too where I know both of us have gotten very emotional over the course of this pandemic. And for me, I was just, I was so confused as to why, like, why are tears just pouring down my face right now? And they weren't tears of sorrow. They weren't tears uh, of loss, but it was, it, they were tears of, of realization that it was only through this particular experience that I got to reclaim some sense of my ministerial calling and be able to actually embrace that and use it and try new things and develop skills and talents and to try and make the best of a situation that has just been so hard on all of us. So not only is there that, you know, sorrow from the, the horror and the death and destruction that we face, but there's also the tears of joy that come from, wow, something is possible that I never thought I would have the opportunity to re-embrace in this sort of way and to be able to become a, a better pastor and a better person to be able to listen better and to understand the frustrations that I feel. And it, I, I have to say, you know, I, I, I don't like shout outs or anything like that, but I, I will say thank you, Father Joe, for just offering this opportunity to myself, Sister Nicole, Deacon Sean, uh, to, to just get out there and try and do something with a situation that we had no control over and to engage those ministerial attributes, I think, that we all have. And we had a chance to do something like that during this pandemic. The tears, both of joy and sorrow, are that we are we are seeing hope emerge from all of this. But that also means that things will continue to change and and develop and evolve. And as the prayers during the pandemic come to a close, I came to a realization that for all the horrible things that I experienced and heard during this pandemic, one of the greatest joys that I had and one of the things that just kept reoccurring over and over again was when I got to preach on Tuesdays. And that is something that is irreplaceable and will be something that lives in my heart for a long time after this all passes. And I I just reflect on, on a beauty in the midst of ugliness, which I think is kind of what Christ is saying as he's leaving his disciples Things are going to change. Things were hard after I, I was crucified and then resurrected. Things things were hard. And then things are going to be hard in a new way, in a different way. But we're going to deal with it. You're going to go out and make disciples because of this experience. And that is the blessing of the faith that we live in. Beautifully said. And those of you that have been listening for a while know that uh, my dear brother in Christ and my dear brother in life, Father Ricks does not like accolades, does not like to be complimented. But aside from the preaching that he's been doing on prayers for reflection, what he has not told you that he is also doing is he's assisting with all of our pre-Cana counseling classes with our wedding couples that have lost and grieved um, their weddings. We literally had 22 cancellations. And some of the couples have been sharing that it's just like a death. You plan for something your whole life and... The rule is, nope, you can't do it now. It's over. You can go to Walmart or you could go to Costco, but you can't have a wedding with your family. But Father Ricks and I, Deacon Sean, Sister Nicole, have been counseling couples literally for the past month. On Monday, and Father Ricks has, has had this 
transformation into humility that is beyond my comprehension. <laughs> he has he came to our Monday evening service that helped first responders. And those of you that are listening, I know that a number of you were on that call. And it's spiritual help for the helpers. And Father Rich was like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a first responder, but I wanted him there. And, you know, he has family members that were paramedics, EMTs, work in a nursing home. But his presence there was amazingly powerful. You know, a story that's literally probably a decade old. When I first met Father Rex back in the day, and we were in seminary, I was pushing him so hard to become a New York City firefighter or a cop. And I, I still believe, I said, that's the calling. That's living the gospel, going out on the street and helping people in crisis. That's the living gospel. And, you know, more and more I keep thinking about that. And, and uh, I believe you just turned 30 years old. You have five more years to do that. If that's uh, uh, still <laughs> two more, more, okay, all right, all right, all right. But it depends on where because there's places with no limitation. But in all seriousness, to all the first responders out there, we are here to help in so many different ways. And even though prayers during pandemic is ending, uh, we have this new Zoom platform. So we have, we could have group counseling if your department needs help or if you need help individually. That's what we do. This podcast is a great idea. It's, it's reaching a, a phenomenal audience. But priests um, help people one-on-one. One of the more powerful things that I have been doing during this time is listening to confessions. Uh, some in the hospital via Zoom or FaceTime of people who perceive or think that they may die and want to take away that burden that's so heavy upon their soul. And it's, it takes my breath away just to be able to listen, um, to counsel a little bit. But the most important thing is to absolve in the name of Christ. Your sins are forgiven. And it is such a simple, beautiful thing to do. So we are here to help time and time again. And uh, especially, I mean, my goodness, the fact that with Father Joe, you being out there on the East Coast and having to kind of um, face mortality when you go out in public and try and perform your ministerial duties in as safe of a way as possible, you still, I, I, I know, and this is something too that kind of is on my mind, is the fear of um what's around us. And I I think that that's something that kind of is not unfamiliar to those in the scripture, uh, the disciples who being persecuted and followers of Christ being persecuted both prior to his crucifixion. And then after his resurrection, you know, Christ met them in a darkened room, locked away from society, you know, doing their own quarantine and self isolation. And there's that, there's a power, I think, in the experiences that we're having right now that resonate so clearly. And I think with the the adapting to the internet technology and being able to do our Facebook Live prayers during the pandemic, for us to have our Zoom meetings to be able to comfort and console those that can't be in the physical presence of others, I think Christ also tells us that over the course of his ministry and in his death and resurrection, there's new ways to do things. And that's what the gospel is all about, is that there's new ways to embrace the hardship that we face and the obstacles that we have to overcome. And yet he offers us that counsel that there is a new way to be able to reach others in the same way that he wanted to reach his disciples and all those who followed him and listened to him as we go forth and as we kind of try to return to some sort of normal in the world that we're, the new world that we're living in, that we're still going to have to embrace that. And I think that Christ's reminder is that faith is constantly evolving and that we can learn new things and find new ways to engage with the spirit and with each other. That is so important in a life of faith and for you to be as flexible and open-minded to try and find new ways to make that happen and to see the hundreds and hundreds of people who listen to the online services on a daily basis 
it couldn't be done without that leap of faith and it worked and it it just it is something that i think we should take from this experience that what we do is not in vain that we can try new things we can try to meet the spirit where the spirit is and the Spirit will bind us all together in those moments. Uh, Father Rex was actually very honest and open about showing and sharing his emotions earlier, and I'm, I applaud him for that. And That's what this time is supposed to do to, for all of us, is to let those emotions really rise up to the top and, and to be seen. And There's been so much horror and death and loss, and I hope that some of you listening also can go back and go to our Facebook page, St. Joseph Mission Church on Facebook, and to see some of the visuals, see some of the taped shows that we did. And, you know, I'm old and tired, but Father Rickson, even though he shared that he got very emotional and cried this week, is, you know, a young 30-something former football player. He's like an ox. He's so tough. <laughs> um, and, and his numbers, uh, his ratings and analytics are so much higher than mine because of that appearance. But to see him show emotion is just a credit to who he is as a human being and to what this time is actually doing for all of us. And to be honest, Father, when I drove to the first service this week um, for that funeral, I'm halfway there and as I'm getting closer, I got really scared and my heart was beating really fast and I had my gloves with me and my N95, if that's what it's called, mask, and, and I could feel my heart pounding. I used to go lights and siren to, you know, shots fired, officer needs assistance, uh, bank robbery, and and that never happened. I'd be excited to go to these places, and I'm literally scared to death of a virus that you can't even see. And when I got to the funeral parlor and I walked in, I was greeted by the director who said, Father, that they're over exceeding the amount of people in there because, you know, she's young and you got to be quick. And I went in and I started the service and I did something that I, I just knew needed to be done. Uh, it wasn't scripted. I, you know, I, I did the blessings. I did the ritual. I said, there are so many people here that, that love this woman. Would anyone would like to come up to say a few words? And of course, um, a number of people did. And I went way over the time. But that's what life is all about, to be able to take a risk, to be able to share our feelings. And it was emotionally the most powerful thing I did. And I had all my my mask on, and I, I, I was soaking wet um, from sweat and nerves when I was done. But it was worth. It was worth that gift of, of being able to be who we are. So, Father, thank you for sharing your emotions this week. Uh, before I do the closing prayer, which will be something a little different, any final comments or thoughts you would like to share? You know, this has been um, a wild and unexpected journey. I think that none of us ever anticipated embarking on. There are obviously some really hard things that many of us have had to deal with and face. But as we exit out of this, I think it's it's obviously it's it's good to remember those that have um, passed away during this this virus, but to also lift up the powerful and really amazing things that were only made possible because of this. I know that for me, as I have experienced the the hardship of, of both Father Joe, Sister Nicole, um, several others that are in my familial circle, that what we do and the risk that we take to try and, and overcome that and try to make something positive out of a really horrible circumstance is just so amazing. And the fact that it's worked. I mean, it. we didn't just try it. It succeeded in ways that I could have never imagined before. And, yeah, we still have, you know, many months, if not years, of struggle and, and turmoil that we're going to have to face. But my goodness, talk about an Easter season to remember. Talk about an Easter season to lift up my heart for the rest of eternity, something that I will hold dear and close to me, that we were able to make something positive out of an experience like this. And I, I don't want to try and get too emotional right now, but it, it really is powerful. It, it's an experience that was placed upon us. 
something that we had to endure, and we did the best with it that we could, which is what Christ calls us all to do in life and in our personal experiences and moving forward into into a new reality. You know, as a reminder, that call that we had earlier in the week, spiritual help for the helpers, a number of those cops talked about grief and loss and the challenges that they're facing. And as a cop, we're, we're taught to shut it out. As a priest, um, we perceive that we go there and we heal or comfort or take away that grief. Make no mistake, grief is not a terrible thing. Even the disciples and the apostles here in this gospel, they had doubt and they had grief, like, where are you going? What happens next? So let that process unfold as it's supposed to. You know, a new book that I just came across this week, it's called The Smell of Rain on Dust, is a great narrative about dealing with grief in a positive way. And just to paraphrase just one line in here, grief expressed out loud for someone we have lost or for a country or a home that we have lost is in itself the greatest praise we can ever give them. Grief is praise because it's the natural way that love honors what is missed. It gave a historical component of the old Mayan culture that actually claims that if you don't deal with grief, it comes back as ghosts, and that solidified tears can turn into great pain and tumors in the body. So show grief. But even though that's okay, I want to end with Easter hope on this ascension with a beautiful story called Death is Nothing at All. Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away into the next room. Whatever we were to each other, we still are. Call me by my own name. Speak to me in the easy way, which you always used to. Laugh as we always laugh together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be a household word that is always was. Let it be spoken without effort. Life means all that it was ever meant to. It is the same as it ever was. There is absolutely nothing unbroken. Why should I be out of your mind because I am out of your sight? I am but waiting for you, for an interval, somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well. Nothing is past. Nothing is lost. One brief moment and all will be as it was before. Only better, infinitely happier and forever. And we'll all be one together with Christ. Father Rex, bless you and all of our listeners on this ascension of the Lord. Amen. Amen. See you all next week.